Hey everybody, welcome back and today we have another Autogen update. We are now at version 0.2.14. We'll go over the simple updates first and then context handling, logging, and code executors. Let's get started. Okay, for the simple updates, we have improvement to the GPT Assistant, updating the gallery section on their website to make it easier to navigate. We now have mock validation of the OpenAI API key and the LLM config. And we can individually retrieve agents now from group chat. Let's first go over context handling. And what do I mean by this? Well, an agent's chat history with other agents is a common context that it uses to generate a reply. And the thing is, if the context gets too big, then we don't want the agents to crash. Let's just go through an example and I'll show you how it works. We first want to import context handling here. Then we just create an assistant agent like usual. But now we have this manage chat history variable where we say context handling dot transform chat history. So this is going to call the class transform chat history over here. And we have three variables that we need. We have a max tokens per message, a max messages, and a max tokens. Okay, this means per message, we only want a maximum number of 100 tokens. The number of messages total is 10, and the max number of tokens altogether we want is 1,000. We then can add this to an agent. So we're going to add this to the assistant agent. We have a user proxy agent, and then we just initiate the chat like normal. Okay, so here's an example. We have an example with and without context handling. So without context handling, what we have here is an error. So up here in this for loop, they've essentially added very long messages with a lot of tokens. The model's maximum context length is 4,097 tokens. However, your message resulted in just over 1 million tokens. Okay, so this is, this is if we were to do this like normal, this would obviously crash the agents and we wouldn't be able to run it. However, if we do the same thing, but we're going to have this transform chat history now associated to the assistant agent, this means that we're going to truncate parts of the chat so that we can actually run this. It truncated 1,991 messages and 49,800 tokens. And then it was able to run. Okay, so it just said it truncated a bunch of things, but let's go over the logic to see why or how it's actually working. Okay, so in the transform chat history, what they've done is they have three strategies here in this order, and this is how it's gonna truncate tokens and messages so that we can actually perform the task. The first thing is it truncates messages to a maximum number of tokens. In this variable here that we created in the context handling .transform chat history, we say that max tokens per message is 100. So it's going to truncate all the messages down to 100 tokens. Then it limits the number of messages to keep. So let's say we still have like a thousand messages, but now they're each under 100 tokens or at the maximum 100 tokens. Well, that's still a lot of tokens. So now this max messages equals 10. We now will truncate all the messages, meaning we'll remove them down till we have 10 left. And then finally, it limits the total number of tokens in the chat history, which means if it adds up all of the number of tokens in all these 10 messages, if they're still above this maximum number, so say if this was 999, so we could have 100 tokens per message and have 10 of them, that would be 1000. Well, the max tokens is 999, then it'll take away a token from one of those messages. So it now reaches down to 999. For the next update, they've added runtime logging with Autogen. This is gonna to help to log data for debugging and performance analysis. And basically how this works is there's an Autogen runtime logging dot start, and then you can stop it by calling the runtime logging dot stop method. And here they start the logging. And then at the end, after they initiate the chat, so whenever we're done having the LLM calls, then we stop the logging. And it's not just that, we can also log these into a database. As you can see here, when we go to runtime logging dot start, we can give it a config with the property DB name and then the name logs dot DB. And what this does is it logs the request, the response, the cost, and the start time and end time and the total number of tokens for that LLM call. And this is useful because let's say we have a session where you have a huge prompt. Well, you can see how much it's gonna cost and the number of tokens it took to create that. And then with this analysis, you can maybe determine if you need to have better performance, maybe it's with your prompt or a different model. And we can also see what models perform better. I really like this one that we can have performance analysis because just a couple updates ago, we had the Autogen benchmark. So we can see which models have correct tests and have correct Python code. And then with that, we can also log those sessions to see how much they cost and how long it took to actually run uh, and test the functions that they created. And for the last change, we have the code executors. 
Now, remember, whenever the assistant agent writes Python code, it's the user agent that actually executes that code. Normally, it's just going to be done on your local machine because if you don't have Docker running, you need to set the use Docker property to false. Otherwise, it'll run in a Docker container. Right now, those are really the only two ways to have code execution. Well, what if we want to use something like Jupyter Notebooks, right? Or a different environment? Well, this is what this change is for. For instance, here is a piece of code. We can say user proxy agent, give it the name like usual, code execution config, but now there's an executor property IPython embedded. This is basically the old version or the na old name of Jupyter Notebooks. And then with that, you can give an output directory. Or if you just want to run local command line code, you can say user proxy agent, code execution config, the executor, you can give it command line local, and then give the working directory, which is the property that we're used to seeing, and just call it coding. But if we're using something like Jupyter Notebooks, it would be nice that the agent knows that it's interacting with a Jupyter Notebook, and it can use some of its features. Well, you can also create a user-defined executor. And here's an example that they've created for a notebook executor. Basically, there's this main function that you need to override execute code blocks. And so for each code block in the list of code blocks, it's going to run a cell and then give the standard output and the standard error if there was one. But this is going to allow it to show up on your Jupyter notebooks in a nicer formatted way. And then down here for a user proxy agent, you can give it the code execution config. The executor property will now just point to that notebook executor class that we just created. All right, those are the major updates from 2.13 and 2.14. I hope you learned something. And you know, it seems like every week they're coming out with at least one new version. And they're really trying to push the limits of Autogen. I think from this, the code execution and the logging are probably two of the better ones because the context handling, I understand, but the models are starting to have bigger context windows. And so I don't know how, like, I don't know how important it will be because a lot of people don't really use the whole context window. I know we liked it, especially in the beginning, it was kind of a huge deal, right? Especially with stuff like MemGPT that really helped out with that. And this is helpful. I, I totally understand that the context handling could be helpful, but I think the logging for performance analysis, along with the benchmark that came up with a couple weeks ago, that can really help understand what models are better for certain you know, for certain uh, projects that you want to work with. Thank you for watching. Like and subscribe. I also have a free newsletter that comes out every Sunday. The link will be in the description below. Also check out my GitHub. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them down below. Here's some more videos on Autogen. Have a wonderful day.